Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great Friday afternoon, and I want to share something with you here. We have talked a lot about Michael Irvin's case, and um, I, let me be clear. I am a Dallas Cowboy fan, a Dallas Cowboy YouTuber, and a Michael Irvin fan. Okay, but I have tried to put everything out there as it has come out to allow you to make judgments on this. And the thing about this case to me is you are innocent until proven guilty. And this case is about this case. We have all done things in our past that if you you can't condemn somebody for something they did years ago. Each incident should rank up there as this is what happened here. Here are the facts. Here's where it gets proved. And so I try to be transparent as much as possible and put out there what we find out. That's why I interviewed the witness who was there who said, here's what happened. I showed the tape in its entirety and stuff. I've showed the um, press conferences and things. Everything that Michael Irvin's side has put out there, we've given. The little bit that Marriott has put out as far as evidence, we put out there. So looking at this, I look at this from this incident and what's going on. So I got an email today. I'm not going to give the person's full name, but we're going to say Kenneth. And I want to read the email in its entirety and respond to it. And here's the thing I want to also impress upon people too. We can all have a difference of opinion without it being confrontational. Here we are in America. Everybody is right to have their own opinion. And everybody should have their own opinion. And in fact, we should discuss differences of opinions because there are three sides to everything. There's your side, my side, and somewhere in the middle lies the truth. And until we're able to discuss things fully as adults, we're never going to get to problem solving. So that's why I want to bring this up here and give my point of view. Kenneth, and I'm not going to put their name out there. Sir, been following your YouTube postings on Michael Irving. I know you're a huge Dallas Cowboys booster, but at some point you need a reality check. First of all, given Michael Irvin's many off-the-field transgressions, both as a player and post-retirement, it is highly likely that he said this, uh, said to this woman exactly what she is stating. He has been a notorious womanizer his entire adult life. He has had substance abuse problems as well. He's not the personification of all American boy, as his attorneys would have us believe. And where is his long-suffering wife through all of this? Why isn't she by his side during these many press conferences? Clearly, she has been down this road too many times. Talk about unfaithful husbands. Michael Irvin has to rank up there with Tiger Woods, Magic Johnson, Kobe Bryant, Sean Kemp, Wilt Chamberlain at least never cheated on his wife. Can Michael Irvin say that with a straight face? Michael Irvin spends so much time traveling away from his wife, his total probability rivals Chamberlain's famous, infamous statement of sleeping with 20,000 women. One reason the NFL pulled him off the air so quickly was they are probably having him on a short lease for numerous incidents in the past, including being fired for misconduct. Check out his Wikipedia page if you need to refresh your memory. When the latest estimate was first reported, he claimed no knowledge of this woman and couldn't even tell you what she looked like. And he's admitted to having been drinking. When the attorney gets involved, he somehow ingrains his memory that nothing happened. And then we have this so-called witness proclaiming to everybody who sticks a microphone in front of them that Michael Irvin is completely innocent of any and all wrongdoing. They couldn't hear the actual conversation between Michael Irvin and the employee, but they were sure that it was harmless in every way imaginable. This woman was an employee 
in capital letters. Their first priority is to ensure that all guests are treated with the uttermost courtesy and respect. That is their number one focus. In instance, Michael Irvin propositioned her, which he has a long history of as a practice. She's probably shocked that the now 57-year-old man would act like such a crude manner. What did he want her to do? Slap him in the face or kick him his private parts? He and his daughters older than this woman. She should have she would have faced criminal charges and probably lost her job. She obviously was trying to make the best of an unspeakable behavior by Michael Irvin. She reported this to her supervisors the next day, and the NFL interviewed her. And now others on YouTube are claiming that this innocent this incident was staged by staff members to discredit Michael Irvin. For that reason, what was the motive? The woman is not seeking damages, nor the Marriott. But this does sound like Michael Irvin is up to his old tricks. Threatening somebody with a big lawsuit with some out of the court settlement to be reached without truth emerging. Personally, I think Michael Irvin should enter rehab to curb his many addictions, similar to what Tiger Woods went through, and then maybe he can resume his career. Um, Kenneth, I'm not sure I saw all that on the tape. I, I and, and here's the thing that I will say, and, and because going through here, Let's 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 go ahead and deal with this right out because see here's there's perception and then there's reality, okay, and you are innocent until proven guilty. So if you go through and look up Michael Irvin's off the field issues, Michael Irvin's most well documented off the field incident came in the off season of 1996. On March 4th of that year, Irvin was arrested in a motel room. You know, in, as a Cowboy fan, we all know about that one. Okay, yeah, we know about that. Police testified he appeared to be under influence of something when they opened the door. Okay, which was, what, 96? 20-some-odd years ago. I mean, we're talking about <laughs> last time the Cowboys won the Super Bowl. Okay, all right, how about that one? Now, there was a case in 2000. 2007, I believe. It was an allegation. Um, the latest problem that happened to Michael Irvin cons uh, concerns an, accused, an, an, accusation, an accusation of sexual assault. The only thing known at the current moment is a woman has claimed that Irvin raped her while she was in the Hollywood, um, Hollywood Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Florida. The incident, according to ESPN, Happened in 2007. Irving, at the moment, denied the allegations, has not faced any penalty by his current employer, the NFL um, Network. And that case was never brought to trial um, because the police investigated it and said there's no there there. That was actually a person that Michael Irvin had been seeing and had known for many, many years. I can't say what happened there. But it wasn't enough for the authority to say, Michael Irvin, you're under arrest. Okay. Um, there's those two. The motel room, of course, we know about. I'm going back through because I want to pull all this up. Um, of course, there's this thing right here. Um, we do know about the scissors where he cut um, McIver in training camp. But, again, that was back in his play day, playing days. Um he has been blackmailed. He has not he has not blackmailed others. He's actually been blackmailed. And going back through. Um and then 2011, um, he was carjacked. Um, but they recognized him and flashed the gun. According to Irvin, the gun immediately pulled away once the robber realized it was Michael Irvin. So he was gonna get carjacked and then they recognized it was Michael Irvin. That's it. That's all of it. That's all that I could find. Um, that's all I could find. But looking at this, if we are going through the tape, going through the tape and looking at this, you know, this day and age where people are constantly in your face, 
And it's different from when I grew up where you actually went out and dated somebody before you actually slept with them. Now, nowadays it's, you know, let's hook up and, you know, go about our ways and I don't need to know your name. And I'm not trying to justify that or anything else. I'm glad I'm married and not out dating and stuff because I'd probably go crazy trying to understand this new world and stuff. Um, hypothetically, let's say he did say, Hey, you're, you know, would you like to get together or something? Um, apparently if she said, no, nah, I'm an employee, I can't do that. Then he went about his business. There was no, I'm grabbing you by the arm and putting you into the elevator and taking you to my room or, you know, I'm, uh, I'm going to grab a hold of you and start, you know, kissing on you without anything. They shook hands. And I will say her stepping back was the two of them standing in a walkway where people are going back and forth. Because if you watch the tape, you can see people are walking back and forth on there. And I dare say, when I look at that, hey, let's get out of the way. So let's step out of the way here. So people can get past. I just don't see what you see. But it's okay. Because here, everybody has the right to their own opinion. And unfortunately, like when we used to hear things about... <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. When you used to hear things like the police were called to Des Bryant's house six times. <coughs> we automatically think... Miami Vice is coming there with, you know, SWAT team. One of the times, maybe it was locked in the car. <sighs> Sorry. <clears throat> I can't agree with you on that one. But, hey, you do you, Kenneth. You do you. I'm Mark Holmes, and, well, I'm trying to give all sides of this thing an equal air to everybody. I'll see you soon.